What is up, guys? Spraggy back again with PokerVIP.com. We are playing two tables on Tony Bet. Our action continues from part one and part two of this series. If you haven't seen those yet, uh, feel free to check them out. Uh, on the left hand side, uh, left hand side up here, we're playing the five cent, ten cent Poker VIP table on Tony Bet with some Poker VIP regulars and some other Tony Bet randoms. Um, we're doing okay. We've we've uh, we've got a, a stack up. To 22 euros and change right hand side we're playing some 25 cent 50 cent euro tables and our friend from part one and two dance is pretty much gambling hard in every spot um has been all in with the four two in a three bet part um has been all in preflop with nine ten all sorts of fun stuff happening uh, so we're going to stick around on this table hopefully pick up some strategic content of how best to deal with these players in general it's value bet value bet value bet it's going to be calling wide to shoves it's going to be re isoing him uh, what hands we want to be re him with uh, and how, in general, we're going to adjust strategies against him. I think TNB probably a recreational as well, playing on the tablet with the 20 euros and uh, it's doing some interesting things. Um, so welcome back for part three. We're going to do and uh, go for another half an hour of action once again. Left hand side with the A7. We're going to def uh, we're going to fold versus the undergun open. And right hand side, 3-2 off, we'll just uh, take a fold as well. We are losing since we started recording the video session. Um, we ran queens into kings at 50, no limit. We also ran ace-queen into ace-king at 50, no limit for 20 euros. So I think overall we'll be down close to two buy-ins, despite the games being probably the best 50 nl game I've played in quite some time. But um, as I said uh, in the previous episodes, we just want to be concentrating on good, solid decision making and making sure we're getting it in with the best hand or putting money in with the in profitable situations. Uh, it's going to be a pretty straightforward one in terms of bluffing. There's not going to be too many opportunities or reasons why we would want to bluff against these types of players. It's a case of make hands, get money in, uh, and hope to hold, I suppose. We also don't want to see them send each other broke, which is, is happening right now, sadly. Just can't work out who's going to come on top. I would imagine TNB, because Dunce is going to call the river with, like, ace high, calls down. Got 12 euros left. Usually his strategy when he gets to this point is a lot of all-ins. Sadly, 2-3 off is not a hand we want to uh, go to war with him with. Ace and Sue are definitely going to be a uh, fun one. So open on the button. Mellow draw comes along. We flop some interesting backdoors. Dunce is all-in on the right. Hopefully the regular doesn't send him broke. We are going to see that here. We've got some very good backdoors. Uh, we do get raised, just going to be a fold with this one. Plenty of hands we can continue with there. Uh, we don't want to call it as wide as a censored. We have like the jack 10 that'll take a turn, the diamonds, the queen x, the queen 9, kings, aces, queens, 9, 7s, 9, 7, queen 7, queen 9. Uh, so our defending range is full of stuff. We're definitely not worried about getting exploited when it raises. Uh, and so a censored is just going to be a part of our range that we don't continue with. Dance, are you all in? He is not all in. 150 raise. Really unplayable hand, king 5 offsuit. If it was suited, we're definitely taking a flop there. Dance with a bet. Gets called. I think what we're actually going to do is jump off this table. And jump into this one. Because our man Dance is here, but he's got 50 euros. So we're going to play this one instead, where he's a little bit deeper. Because um, this is better value for us. For sure. We've got Abyss Rate, who does seem to be one of the grinding regulars on the street, uh, on the on the site rather. He's he's been on every twenty five cent, fifty cent table we've played so far. Asonus, I, I don't know anything about this guy, but he's he's got his avatar changed, which makes me feel like he plays here at least somewhat regularly to to go to the hassle of changing his avatar. I don't know. That's I'm just using my initial read that he might be a more of a regular player, but we'll see how it pans out. He does come in with the raise. And we're just going to fold.
holding the 10 7 off out of position and uh we're waiting on melodra under the gun here he gets folded to me probably just going to fold 6 5 off suit we don't really want to steal uh as wide as this and be out of position to viva valdez a lot of the time probably start 8 9 off as a raise 7 8 off suit probably close uh it's not And let's definitely not hit. As mentioned previously uh, in parts one and two of this video, when you have a player like Dance at the table, you're really rooting for him to win parts uh, against the regulars, of course, because the bigger his stack is, the better that's going to work out for us. Wouldn't be surprised to see something quite silly if he gets called here. He's still going to have a decent amount of bluffs. He does get picked off. Goes the king high. Fours are good. And important to keep an eye on the table as well because, I mean, it's, it's clearly a guy who is going to get potentially frustrated very easily. I feel like that hand is going to frustrate him just a little bit. Um, so it's interesting just to keep an eye on the game flow, the dynamics of the table, and, and see how that's going to affect him. Very, very dry board. Um, he's going to miss it a lot. We can definitely just bet here and expect a reasonable amount of folds. If he continues, we get a free river. I would imagine most of the time. He raises, clear fold. We're going to check behind now. Talking about getting us a free river as well. I bet he leads. No, he doesn't. Okay, let's check. Not a good run out for our hand. Can check down. 7-4 offsuit is good. But I mean, if he has 7-4 offsuit, he has 8-4 offsuit, which just folds flop. So denial of equity, fine. Um, never, ever, ever going to bluff Dance because he's shown that bottom pair is a 3 street call down for him. Don't want to defend the 3-5 off despite the fact that we want to call almost everything against Dance uh, in the big blind, but that is just going to be too weak. We will reload, though. Comes in with a limp. Wouldn't be surprised to see an ISO. From the button, we're going to fold. I think if I'm button here, I'm making this bigger. Um, Dance is just going to call almost all of the time. And when you're in position um, with a much stronger range, you can just abuse him here and go to like three even. Um, but definitely going to two at least. I think 150 is a small mistake. We're rooting for Dance. Don't take his money, Abyss, right? Don't do it. This is a Dance sort of board, though, isn't it? I mean, I say that Dance could just have Jack-7 offsuit and, and be uh, check folding, but I'd like to think Dance is going to make some hands here sometimes. Pretty unfortunate turn for Abyss rate if he does have something really strong that's going for value, like, you know, pocket nines uh, and up. Or whatever. I wouldn't be surprised to see him pot control a little bit. If he has nines, I honestly think he should value bet here against Dance, because Dance is going to call like Queen 3 by the river. Go on, Dance. Give him the raise. And Dance takes it down. Nice. 3-5 offsuit again. Not nice. Bending on the right, uh, left-hand side with the ace is a little bit thin, but uh, we, we're rolling with it. We're not going to bluff here. We're going to open really wide just because we're in position against our man. Holding on the left. And anticipate him taking a reasonable amount of flops. And even though we have king-8 offsuit, still a very fine play hand to play when a guy a guy is flatting out of position with king three sadly we don't make a flop but uh, i mean with seven three but again he has like seven three i mean there's a lot of gut shots here we have some showdown value we're going to check back naturally calling turn checking down otherwise very interesting river if, if dance leads like anything less than pot we're going to call The super straight is good, my man. But um, 
he's just going to bet almost everything by the river, I would anticipate. So I'm happy calling as wide as a king. Obviously, we have an ace that would call as well, but I think we should extend against Dance. Just I expect to see so much trash. Going to call with the 10-6 suited. And uh, we flopped up pair, which is nice. Definitely looking for multiple streets of value now. Uh, not a great river. I might check call and just hope he turns something into a bluff here. Again, I don't anticipate folding. I think a 9, he probably bets the flop anyway. So, I'm not folding. And uh, it was the correct decision to check call because he has king 4 of hearts, which caught the turn and bluffed the river. Like I say, when people's ranges are just going to be widening so much, we just have to make these adjustments. Um, this is certainly a good, good example of making those adjustments to someone who... It's just playing way too many hands. Eights on the left-hand side comes multi-way. If it gets folded to me, I'm going to take a bet on the button just to uh, deny equity to overcards. And obviously raising the ace-9. Get called by Sleppers. Check behind. You can still have hands like five, six, sevens, eight. Obviously, you can have a nine. Pocket twos, pocket threes. Uh, a lesser percentage of the time. Guess I'm folding. Not going to have a uh, wide enough range for floating the flop. And if he has sevens, sixes, fives, I think he just check checks with me. Folding on the right. It's not an offsuit. Add a position. No dance involved. No dance, no party. Blue joins the table on his phone, tablet, post 50 cents. We will make this two to go. And he just limp shoves 20 euros first hand. It may turn out that this is a snap call against someone like Baloo, because we may find out that he's just here to shove 20 euros every hand. I think in the first instance, we are just going to fold it, though. A little bit too much to be calling off. Probably, I'm definitely calling ace queen, I think. And like 9s plus, maybe even 8s plus. I think it's 10. A little bit too much early doors. But as I said, we've got to keep an eye on this guy. Because if he just starts shoving all in every hand, then obviously in hindsight, ace 10 would have been a snap. But not knowing anything, um, happy to fold it in the first instance. I honestly don't know how this reg can quit his session whilst Dance has still got chips in front of him. Actually, no, he's still here. I don't know who left here, but... In fact, was anyone sitting here? Am I going crazy? Flop top pair against Dance, obviously, uh, just looking to get money in, really. His range for calling the flop, I don't even want to attempt to estimate it, because he called king four on ten nine eight or whatever, so... When we have top pair... We're just bet, bet, and definitely still betting the river. I don't anticipate him to fold a five, honestly. He does sadly find a fold. Table seems pretty good, though. These Tony Bet games are pretty insane. We got 20 euro, 20 euro, 20 euro. One regular and probably four recreationals. How often do you get that in a 50 hour game? Baloo is all in again. I'm beginning to think I want my ace-10 back at this point. Given that's, what, five hands he's been at the table and he's shoved two of them. Dance is going to give him some action. Ah, oh, man, I want to see what shows up here. This could be fun. I actually feel like Dance has got a reasonable hand this time. Ace-7 off, pocket fours. Who am I rooting for? I, mean, I guess I don't really mind. The only problem with a player like Baloo is he might hit and run now. But Dance is going to be, like, all in. Basically every hand. Because he's going to be annoyed that he lost, I would guess. And he tends to do that, his shove a lot, once he loses some of the stack. Hopefully we... No, no, I was going to say, hopefully it goes raise core core, but... Uh, and as, as suspected, Dunce is playing for stacks. I wonder if Baloo knows how wide he should be calling here. He's familiar with Dunce's ways. Then he'll know he'll have to call off pretty wide, but no one does. 
This is where you really want to start picking up some hands because you know stacks are going to be flying. We want to make sure people are crying, but we can't with the 10-5 off. Here it comes. Every hand now. In it goes, folks. There's no stopping him. Jack 10 on the left-hand side. We will just let it go. 6-8 on the right side. We're going to let it go. I think he's going to... That's right. All in. Only a matter of time before someone wakes up with something and makes the call. Hopefully it's me next hand. And not somebody this hand. Everybody keeps folding. Give me something. Oh, eight four off. What are we going to do with that? What are we going to do with that? Now, Baloo's ripping it all in for 40 euros. Tony Bet, what are you like? Dance is going to snap, right? Or is he going to realize he's getting set up? Oh, TNB is going to snap and Dance is going to fold. Expect the unexpected. Baloo's got the queens, TNB with the sevens. Dance is out of here. I, I, I got I to gotta jump onto another table if Dance is about, honestly. He usually joins the other 2550 table if there's another one running. There's only the this one running though. I don't know, maybe I don't know where he's gonna go. Maybe he's just done for the day. Maybe he's had enough. Maybe he's peacing out. That's a shame. We've still got a pretty decent table here. Uh Baloo obviously is shoving all in, but he, he's shoved all in with pairs so far. We've seen fours, we've seen queens at showdown. I think honestly, if I'm Baloo and I have queens, I limp. Because when you just jam into dance, kind of knows what's up and he's going to get, you know, like if he's trying to gamble there and then someone shoves, he's like, oh, I'm not, I'm like, I'm not giving it to this guy because he's clearly got a strong hand. Whereas, do you know what I mean? Like he, out of principle, he's like, oh, I'm not going to gamble with that guy. Um, but I think I just limp if I'm blue and like induce the shove probably. Why, that Laraka guy from part one and two, who was like a huge whale of a calling station, is playing one euro, 250 euro uh, on Tony Bet here. Sadly, I'm, I don't have enough in this account to jump into that game. But he was a, he was a almost dance level recreational player. And he's jumped into the uh, one, one 250 game. We flop very well on the uh, left-hand side on the poker VIP table. We're going to come in for a bet. Viva Valdez has called me a fish cake numerous times. Look. Called my bluff genius. Let's see how he likes me now. I don't like this turn. We're going to check, try and induce. He did see me over the bluff a river before and called me a genius. Might over bet here. And he's tried to pick it off again. I did the same thing with a bluff. I overbet. If you guys watched part one of this series, I overbet. And he said, genius bluff. And now we do it again with the value after check and turn. And we get called by King Jack, two pair. He doesn't seem to be saying anything in the chat anymore. Let's just give him the little needle. I think he's a poker VIP member, so we're all having fun. Is chat broken? You've, oh wait, we better play this hand first. We're just going to call with the top two. Uh, calling with the top two against the regular with the ace six of diamonds. We're just, uh, we're going to call down. Like if he has a hand like ace jack, ace queen, ace king that's um, value betting here, I think he just gives it up, right? If we raise turn. I don't mind the fact that he checked. He bet into three people. So I honestly think he has a decent amount of aces. 
Uh, and we just want a max value against Ace Queen, Ace King. We'll go for the seven. Sadly, a, a check fold on the turn. Gonna fold here. Pretty funny line. Shout out to my man Viva Valdez if you're watching this through uh, Poker VIP. We could find a limp. I think he's just going to ice on me real hard, but let's see. 4x, ready? All right, he comes in for the call. We're going to bet 10 cents. We get called, we'll check. We'll call the turn. Not a great turn, but we have outs. Could have the best hand. And check fold here. Can't wait to show it, can he? Eight to off. I'd hate to get bluffed by that, but I did. Watch him, ready? I think his chat might start working again now. Well, let's find out. Nice hand, mate. Nice hand. Hold on the button. As ever, folks, we're running to the 30-minute mark. Let me just see if uh, Dance has jumped on any other tables here. Doesn't look like he has. I think he just called it a day. That's okay. This game's still very good. We've got Gadoose up here now, joining the seat with half a stack. So, game's always pretty reasonable, it seems. Coming in with a raise with the ace three of hearts. And fives, hopefully we'll be able to take flops. Cracker opens, we're going to call, even though it's got half a stack. We're not purely set mining. We're going to be able to get to showdown um, at least some of the time. And if Caduce opens, we'll call in the big blind. Unless he makes it like three. Don't expect that too often. Big decision on the button, apparently. Taking some time here. And we just get the walk. 8-5 of diamonds. Uh, I don't mind a limp here. Against Bratka90. And we flopped some pretty reasonable equity. We're just going to take the pots at stab. With our gut shot and diamonds. I think we're going to bet. Probably go three streets. Players tend to float here pretty wide. And we do get uh, get there at the river. Guess we want to try and get called by like a nine even. So let's just go two. I'm going to encourage him to raise if he has a straight. Whereas if we go for bigger sizing, he'll flat a straight. Um... I think we definitely would be three betting all in on the river against the guy playing on his phone with half a stack with respect to him. But uh, he just folds for the two. Probably had a very weak pair on the turn and uh, ended up not being able to give it the call. I definitely think with ranges being so wide there um, versus the big blind, we should be going for a smaller sizing and just and just making sure we get called by any pair that gets the river. Sadly, it looks like he, he found a folded one. Uh, this is kind of hard board to connect with as well. So we're just we're going to bet in position. And once again, uh, we do get check called. Going to be able to check down to the river. Uh, King High's still got some showdown value against some spade draws, but most of the time this happens, we just pick up the pot. And there's certainly going to be a raise if Abyss Rate doesn't open. We're just going to get out of the way now. Left-hand side, we've got a pot kicking off a little bit. Very interesting river. What is RP62633 going to do? Pretty big sizing here. Djokovic makes the call. The nut flush is good. I'm going to imagine this is a queen from Djokovic. I think it has to be at a minimum a queen. I think anything else is definitely spew. Some of his weaker queens might be thin as well. 
Let's make the call with King Queen. I think it's a mandatory call. Ace of Clubs, we are going to raise it up. And Pocket Nines, we're going to raise it up. I was just considering our actions if Gaduce three bets. Uh... Certainly close. I, I honestly could get behind a shove. You've seen how, over the course of these two videos, how loose these games are playing. Um, not a hand we want to take into the streets like that often. I feel like jamming is not a complete disaster, honestly. Uh, so we will shove all in with the nines. If we run into it, run in, we, we run into it. Does call off. He does have queens. We do hit a nine on the first run. We have one out for the second. And we chop the pot. I mean, I, th I feel like this is fine. You guys have seen, like, Baloo jamming fours, jamming sevens. You've seen, um, and obviously, Gadoose is a completely different player to Baloo. He's a completely different player to Dance. But with the games as they are, I'm going to assume there's a very decent amount of recreational. So we're just three betting some trash hands there. Um, and, uh, you know, are either going to fold? Obviously, when we get called, I don't expect to be in hugely great shape often. But you, the majority of the time, we could run it twice as well. So. We're running it twice against overs. I don't mind taking flips and whatnot. And if we run into it, it is what it is. I feel like it's fine. With a hand like nines, we don't want to see a flop as well because it's just, uh, it's really hard. Or rather, he's going to be able to own us on some boards um, if he has got some air. And the board is unfavorable for nines, which is going to be a lot of the time. He's going to be able to deny us equity. So I'd rather just like play our equity and just shove, I think. Made the value bet here with the queen 10 and we do get... Looked up by Bratka, who makes the call at the river with Queen 9. We just had him out kicked. This call obviously completely reasonable. The limp from Baloo and an Isom from Gaduce. This is close, honestly. I feel like we can call way more than we normally would be able to because Bratka can call and Baloo call like a way higher percentage of the time than if this was two regulars. And I don't think they squeeze too often. So I am going to make the call and anticipate going multi-way a very, very much higher percentage of the time than if we had two regulars. Like, if there's a regular here, he's going to squeeze a lot. If they're here, obviously we don't have the limp, but with two recreationals, that is that is that is a, a video maker's luck right there. I think this happens such a tiny percentage of the time, honestly. But there it is. There it is, sports fans. The squeeze. The lesser seen squeeze. We'll be getting out of the way. I mean, unless it goes call. No. I don't think so. We are out of position. Close if it goes call here, but half a stack probably just fold. We want to be deeper with our suited hands. We really need Baloo in that pot to make it worthwhile. I didn't anticipate him limp folding, which I don't think he does if the squeeze doesn't come in, obviously. I'm going to fold the 10-8 suited, though. Again, you could make an argument that if we're calling 8-9 suited out of position, 10-8 suited in position. Um... But like Baloo has invested less of the time here. Since he didn't limp, right? He's just going to have more folds in the big blind than he will for a limp, I think. Certainly make an argument to defend this, though. See, betting the Queen Jack, we get called. We are definitely following through on the turn. Even into two players. Viva Valdez has got a bit of a Viva Vendetta against me. We've had some fun playing pots against each other. So if we give this three streets, I don't anticipate him folding a 10. My bluffs can have like, you know, king, queen, queen, nine, seven, eight, seven, eight, some, you know, reasonable bluff. So I don't think he folds like a king, 10, ace, 10 here. Kind of gross if he shoves, honestly. He'd have to turn a 10 into a bluff. Which I don't think he does. Like I said, I think he just calls a 10, so he does fold. Definitely have gotten away from a 10, I suppose. But if he folds a 10 there, then obviously we need to be bluffing every time we have like a king, queen, an ace, queen, uh, 7, 8, 8, 9 sort of hand that bets flop and turns more equity. That is going to conclude uh, part three of the series, though, folks. That's another 30 minutes up. I hope you guys hopefully picked up some relevant strategy. If you, Again, if you have any comments, questions, um, or anything like that, 
uh, I will try and be around on the video, both on YouTube and on Poker VIP. So jump into the comments and I'll get back to you as I can. Uh, as ever, thank you very much for watching and we hope to see you again soon.